time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Good morning, folks. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. I'm your host and one of the certified financial planners on the show. My name is Mike Bernard, alongside my friends and business partners, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you're given the option, should you invest in the stock of the company you work for? Just like most financial decisions, there's some pros and cons, and we're going to help unpack those for you on today's show here on Wise Money. That's right. We are going to be tackling a question from James. If you have a question, reach out to us. There's a few ways you can do so. First, give us a call. Send us a text, 574-222-2000. Second, wisemoneyradio.com. You could submit a question right there on the right, as well as catch previous episodes as well. Lastly, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you can check out content there. Submit a question in a couple of different ways. Uh, just search at Wise Money Radio. We do post all shows. They're streaming to YouTube, and shows are posted on Facebook and all of that sort of stuff. So you can connect with us in several different ways. Oh, lastly, podcast, uh, iTunes, Google Play, Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So all of that. All right. We're kicking off today's program with a question from James. Here's what he asked. I recently became eligible to contribute to my new employer's 401k plan. One of the investment options is the company stock. Is this a good idea or not? Well, that's a a great question. And, you know, before we unpack that together today, I think it's important to maybe kind of reframe this a little bit. Uh, A lot of people, if you don't work for a large corporation, you don't realize that um, this is this is often kind of an employee benefit. Sometimes you're given the ability to uh, I- invest in company stock outside the 401k. Sometimes it's one of your investments inside. You may someday work for a small business that uh, chooses to reorganize itself um, and have its stock owned by an employee stock ownership plan, which is basically a specialized form of retirement plan where you get to become an owner of the company. And so the, the question really boils down to, uh, does it make sense to be concentrated in your employer's stock, or do you try to remain more diversified in maybe more broad mutual funds, that sort of thing? So uh, I, I would frame this maybe uh, as a, do you get concentrated or do you diversify? It's one way to look at it. Yeah, as always, and, and you know, a lot of investment managers, they might call themselves financial advisors, really, really, really focus on return, 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 and return, the return of your investments, very, very important. However, uh, certified financial planners and our approach is really about having the right return target for your goals, to meet your goals, and having an individual stock being concentrated versus having mutual funds or being more diversified can greatly influence that. So uh, like Josh said, most financial questions, uh, the answer is, well, it depends. And this one is as well. So you should talk to your certified financial planner when making this this decision for yourself. But what, what do you need to consider? Let's talk about the pros of investing in your company stock. And then we'll talk about the cons as well. So what are some of the reasons why? Well, I, I think one of the reasons that I would uh, highlight is just simply the fact that it's a company that you're familiar with. You can kind of keep tabs on it. Um, it there, there are some investors out there that say, well, if you're going to buy in a, into a, a company stock, um, make sure it's a company that you know and love and, and believe in. Uh, I think you're a Disney guy, Mike, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you were a Disney stock owner someday uh, just for that reason. I did. I, folks, I, so we've got baby number three on the way. I, when we had our first, it was a girl, and she was totally into the princess thing, and we tried to get out of it, but we spent so much money at the Disney store on Disney stuff, I said, I have to be an owner of this company <laughs> to somehow offset this bad feeling that I get from spending all this money there. So I bought some shares. A little bit, a little bit, Disney stock. The very best scenario is if you're an owner in that company and you don't spend your money on it, other people spend their I money know, on it. that would be so. great. But, you know, when we go to Walt Disney World, they treat me very special because I own shares. Nice. Or maybe they treat everyone that yeah, special. Yeah, you, you keep and telling just, yourself that, right? <laughs> Isn't it the most wonderful place on earth or I something? Think so. Happiest place yeah. on earth? Happiest place. There we go. 
Well, so back to the task at hand here. We're talking about whether or not it makes sense to invest in your own company. And obviously, a, a company that you work for, one of the advantages is you can kind of keep your, your, your fingers on the pulse at some level. Depends on what uh, level within the organization and, and what your view into the company's financials are. So uh, let me give you the yin to that yang. Please. Because, so I think quite often, and again, it depends on the size of the company, quite often people have the illusion of having a good understanding of the company that they're working for. So we work with lots of folks uh, that used to be Allied Signal. And Allied Signal pulled off a string of 30% a year for 10 years. And if you worked for Allied Signal, which either became Bosch or Honeywell, depending on which division you were in, those folks, if you ever talk to them about diversifying in the 401k out of Allied Signal stock, they looked at you like you had a third eye in the middle of your forehead. Like there's something seriously wrong with you. Why would I ever get out of Allied Signal stock? All of my friends that have incredible wealth have it because of Allied Signal stock, so I would never get out of this stock. And so it's it's very, very confusing um, because I could be a guy that sits in a, a small closet and has a, a relatively obscure job, but I feel confident that I'm in touch with the board of directors at Allied Signal, and I know that what kind of what they're doing and what decisions they're making, so I have great confidence, although most likely misplaced, that I know what the company's doing. And I've seen, I've seen folks that their investment strategy was, I am loaded up on my company stock, and I have CDs. And when you talk to them about the idea of diversification, not this dumbbell approach where I've got a chunk of equities on this side, just one company, and then uh, just no risk on the other no side. risk on the other side, that didn't make any sense because they they had they said there's an, there's equal here, no risk on either side, and you couldn't you couldn't explain, hey, no, no, no there's huge risk on this side. No, there's not because I work there every day and I know what's going on. Yep, I agree with everything that you just said. There is uh, maybe another pro in here, though, at, at some level, and that is the feeling that you get to be rewarded uh, along with the, the, the good prospects of the company. I mean, right? a really tough thing. If you don't own, if you, if you aren't owning in some of the goodness that your company is offering, there's this chance that you could miss out or, or a feeling that you could miss out. And so you're at the water cooler. Everyone's talking about how they're getting rich because the stock's doing great, and you're not. And so I would tell you, I mean, that, that's a little bit of a pro and a con, which we'll get to the cons in just a minute, that bias and some of the risk there. But one of the pros is that, yeah, I mean, you're contributing to the company's success and owning some of the stock helps you participate in some of that success. Another benefit to owning company stock, if it's a, if it's a good company, is that by doing it in the 401k, you are systematically investing in your company stock. So systematic, so I'm not saying the company stock's great. I'm saying the strategy of systematic investing is great. And so that's that's one of the ways that you can systematically invest in the stock of a company that you're very interested in and following. That's a principle that's true no matter what you're investing in, though, right? Yes, sure. It's, it's mostly true. The more volatility or the swings that happen within an investment that you are doing kind of a slow, steady drip of new money into over time is that as it goes through its ups and downs, your steady contributions are going to buy more shares during the rough times, mm -hmm. and it will buy less shares during the the really uh, gangbuster times. And the net effect to you is that you will have entered that stock at the best possible average price yes. over time. And that's one of the reasons why we're big believers in getting into the habit of saving into your, your 401k. And so whether you are buying individual stocks like your, your own company stock or you're investing in mutual funds, everything Kevin just said is is a concept or a principle that you have to have built into your financial life. So you can do that within the 401k, buying if your company stock's available there. And it's also possible to buy systematically at a reduced rate even in some employee stock purchase plans. I've got a, a lot of folks that do that, and you can usually buy, you set money aside on a quarterly basis, and you buy at a reduced rate at the end of that quarter. Let me ask you a question. Do you know 
of a strategy called net unrealized appreciation. And do you know how it applies to this conversation we're having? If you don't, and even if you do, stay tuned. We have a lot more to cover here. That and more here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. <coughs> so let's start with that because that's, that's another pro, right? And then we can start touching on some of the cons. And if this, if this goes into the third segment, that's fine because I'd, We've got a couple of listener questions, and I can bring in more if we need to, but there's just a handful. So usually I've got a long list of ones in there, but I have three, so oh, this can... What's up? The Bitcoin question. It's been on the list for a while. Are you... I don't feel equipped or prepared or well-educated on that, but... It's taking a dive now because of China. I know. So, yeah, I don't feel one bit ready. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's why you watch on YouTube, folks. You get a little extra Kevin Corhorn humor. <laughs> I try to get as much of it as I can. Uh, but I usually don't get most of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so we're going to... See, Doc? Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube... We usually ask Casey, between 0 and 100%, what does he bring into the show today? And <laughs> he's phoning it in, folks. Today, he's only 70%. But, um, which, is up, that, which is up. I, and I'll take 70% of Casey over 100% of almost anyone else. Yeah. But, okay, so uh, we're going to, this the NUA. Let's it, just explain what it is and, and how it can it, be a. Well, a I want to talk about, yes, I want to do it in layers. Yeah. Okay. Let's and again, we've got time. We could we could take NUA as the entire segment, talk about cons in the third segment, and hit questions in the fourth segment. So, you've got, as we've talked, you you like to have a lot of room to move, and we've got a ton. Good. So I'm moving. I've learned that expressives are movers, <laughs> and they spontaneously touch mm, people. And your hands are cold. <laughs> and my heart is warm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Look, look. Here's the thing. We love Casey. We want to. We want to keep that vibe. Because I can tell you how we would feel about Casey if it didn't save. The yeah. Thing is, yeah. It's November fourth. We can do it again. You're wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. So when I was doing the 22 push-up challenge, I was at the gym and I had my trainer record me and there, there were these really hard, they were on the t-rex really hard push-ups and so i said okay here we go are you ready What's that? Ready. okay i said all right let's do it and so i did my 22 push-ups and she gives it back to me and i went to look at it and it was a picture <laughs> and i said marla you took a picture of me i'm supposed to post a video she's like oh i'm sorry here you do it again 44 <laughs> 44 push-up challenge i gotta do it again in a knuckle sandwich here segment two okay Good morning, folks. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. It's my pleasure to be with you. My name is Mike Bernard, next to Josh Gregory, next to Kevin Corhorn in the KFG studios. Uh, special thanks to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern, and Keene, as well as First State Bank for sponsoring the content of today's program. So far, we've been answering a question from James. I'll tease that out in just a second. We've got a few more layers to hit there. If you have a question, which you probably will, we're going to get a little bit into the weeds. Reach out to us, wisemoneyradio.com, call or text 574-222-2000, or uh, connect with us Facebook, Twitter, and watch all the episodes on YouTube at Wise Money Radio. All right, here's James' question. We led the show with it. We're still hitting it. He recently became eligible to contribute to his new employer's 401k plan. One of the investment options is the company stock. Is that a good idea or not? So often, it depends. We're talking about some of the pros, and we've got a big one to hit now. And we're going to talk about some of the disadvantages or cons, the reasons why you wouldn't. So I teased out a, a really complicated, potentially, um, reason why you might want to. And, and it's, a, it's a pretty cool strategy. So, Kevin, let's, let's start getting into it. Okay, so when you think about one of the reasons why... I might want to own company stock. One of the potential advantages is is that you could pay a lower tax rate 
on that company stock that you purchased in the 401k than you pay on all the rest of your 401k. And so I want you to know, so let's just deal with this in layers. The first layer is if I have company stock and I've invested it in it in my 401k and I'm done working there, I need to work with a certified financial planner. What we're, uh, we're about to get a little bit into the weeds and it's fairly complex. It, believe me, folks, it's fairly complex for most financial advisors. Most financial advisors either don't know what you're talking about or are unwilling to run the miles and, and do the work that's required to help you walk through a net unrealized appreciation rollout. That's right. Most uh, financial professionals, they can get into a rut behaviorally or with their recommendations. And a lot of financial advisors would tell you that when you leave your employer, roll over that 401k into a traditional IRA. That is not a taxable event. What it does is it allows you to continue to postpone the taxes on those dollars but get maybe access to more diversification, more mutual funds. You have the whole world to choose from as far as investment options. And if you rush into the decision to roll over your 401k and you don't pause, you don't stop and consider this strategy, maybe because your advisor doesn't know about it or because you don't know about it, or you just kind of get into the habit of rolling over dollars when you retire, um, maybe you miss an opportunity here that Kevin's uh, explaining. So yes, go ahead. You, you could miss an opportunity when you retire, but you also could be 30 years old starting your career and not know about this and miss a huge opportunity for some growth or, or so on, right? But no, you could miss this opportunity when, you're in, when you are in your 40s, Yeah, as we had a client do. So we, there, was, there was a client that was... Um, that had been referred to us, and he was going to come in and meet with us. And a lot of times, people are a little self-conscious of what they have going on in their financial life, so they're hesitant to come in and talk to a financial planner. Yeah, sure. I say, it's folks, intimidating. Yeah, do, do not be intimidated. Right. Don't, don't be intimidated. Um, what You need to come as you are. Come as you are. Don't touch a thing. Because what this guy did is he was feeling a little self-conscious that he had all this company stock in his 401k. So he sold all the company stock in his 401k and diversified it within his 401k before he came and saw us. And you know what he did? He gave up an opportunity to save tens of thousands of dollars of income tax on the money that he had in his company stock plan. So he was, he was trying to position himself to uh, appear better, and I say, folks, don't don't worry about it. We part of our role is to take what you bring, and to and to shine it up and get it to perform as good as it can. We there are no value judgments, folks, especially at Corhorn Finance Group. This is not an infomercial for Corhorn Finance Group, but but certainly any of you that work with us or would want to call us, we. There's no value judgments. We are the biggest cheerleaders for your financial goals. We are. Folks, you can do it. We believe you can do it best if you're working with a certified financial planner, but you can go out and achieve those goals. Your certified financial planner, the right one, will have no reservations about what your goals should be. They're just going to be 100% sold out to help you get there. But one of the hindrances to you reaching your goals is paying too much in taxes. Yes, right? yes. And so missing an opportunity to avoid a whole lot of tax, Uncle Sam's not going to send you a thank you card for paying extra tax. So it's important that you work with your financial advisor to not let these dollars slip through the cracks. So here's the simple concept. Paying capital gains taxes are at a lower rate than ordinary income. All of your retirement dollars, your pre-tax dollars, when they come out, and you take possession of those, you're going to pay ordinary income on those dollars. If you do it correctly, the gain on your company stock, and there, there's some fancy footwork involved here, but the gain on your company stock can be taxed as capital gains. And by doing that, we've seen situations where people have liter literally saved tens of thousands of dollars. And the reality is, if you're in the 15% tax bracket or less, which is possible in retirement, mm -hmm. your capital gains rate is zero. Zero. That, that, that money that otherwise would be taxed at ordinary income would 
be taxed at zero, folks. So if I'm in the ordinary income tax bracket, if I'm ordinary income tax bracket of 15% and I have capital gains instead, I pay zero on those capital gains. Folks, that is a huge deal. And that's where the tax planning comes in to manipulate your income to have a year or two, or depending on how many you need, to be in the 15% tax bracket so you can have zero capital gains uh, rate and pay no taxes on those gains. You know, if you're a do-it-yourselfer out there who is um, on the verge of retirement and you're going to march into retirement on your own without a guide walking with you, this would have to be part of your checklist before retirement. I just, I just don't know how you would pull this one off without a CPA who's helping you crunch the numbers without a certified financial planner who's helping you strategize and and make this work for you. If if you are on this side of retirement, you haven't walked through it and you have company stock, now is the time to be talking to a financial advisor to explore these types of strategies. And and the point here folks is, you know, this is all embedded in James' question. He's got company stock that he can purchase into within his 401k. We're going to talk in just a little bit about some of the disadvantages of that. We've teased a couple of them out, but we're going to talk about it. This isn't um, just the obvious, clear answer, you've got to do this. But folks, if it's available, you need to sit down and have someone look at your entire financial picture, all six areas of your financial life, and help you make decisions that are in sync with all six areas in this one really could be in sync with cash flow, with tax planning, with investment planning, and with retirement planning. Retiring, getting on track for retirement is difficult enough. Yes, as Josh said, if you're paying too much in taxes, it's going to be even harder. So make sure you're sitting down with your certified financial planner. I don't know. I, I don't know. Kevin, is there is there more to teach here with the, with the NUA is what it's well, called. basically what you want to do when when you're done working and you're rolling your 401k over to an IRA, you think of think of when you when you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and you you're separating the egg yolk from the egg white <laughs> and you want to I'm going to oversimplify but roll the stock out, separate the gain from your basis. The basis needs to go back in the IRA. And the gain stays in a non, uh, non-qualified non account, and you can make decisions as to when is the best time to sell it from there. So uh, just to just kind of put that into um, a shell here. Uh, Cute. So thanks. <laughs> uh, this can be a very, very valuable strategy, saving you tens of thousands of dollars, but it is so complicated. It, it, it's almost easier. I would definitely say it's easier to get this one wrong than to get it right. So yes, have a professional. You'll probably need a couple professionals in your corner. And if you're doing it yourself, this would be a great time to invite some professionals into that conversation. So why wouldn't you want to do this? Why wouldn't you want to own company stock within your 401k or even outside? There's a, there's several reasons that you need to be aware of before doing this. So we've got that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Okay. So that's a second segment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I slacked everyone because I heard. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, um, so I'm going to just quick make a quick uh, okay. announcement. So if, if we... If this was third segment and we just did cons, that'd make me feel good about the questions that we've got lined up. Because that would mean there's enough questions to fill one segment. Right. In fact, uh, we might not get to Corey's question. Okay. Maybe, maybe maybe Corey's question is a wise money minute. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Because it's more, see, that's why I say you're ready for it because it's, it's principle. It's, it's a principle, not an, an not. Don't take it literal. <laughs> What's the principle did, there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, what? Um, we can take the entire. We can take as much time as we want on cons, the reasons why you wouldn't want to. Um, I'm assuming it won't take all ten minutes, but if it does, that's fine. And that leaves us one segment to answer three questions, and I bet we'd only get to two. It'd be good. I think to, so. To me, the con that I want to. St- I want to spend some time with is t- citing certain examples. 
Okay. Of where it, it hasn't worked. And I think of Harley. Mm-hmm. I think of Biomet. And I think of... Enron. Federal Mogul. Okay. What about uh, Kroger? So, okay, so so let's... So I, I would be happy to just take Federal Mogul in that one. Okay. If you if you guys want to pick uh, one of those, and if you have a client example, but I mean, think of all the RV people that realized they couldn't retire because they who did Harley own? Monaco. Dude, we have to say that because all the people at Monaco that watched Harley at seventy three in October of '06 go to twelve. In 09, back to 73 in April of 14, and today it stands at 48. Okay, so if, if one of us brings up that story, can you walk yeah. through that timeline? Yeah, I think, I think, can you make sure to bring it up? <laughs> yeah, I'll try to. I, I was going to mention Kroger as well, not specifics on stock prices or anything, but just, you know, you, you never know when... Amazon's going to make an announcement that changes your fundamental business, at least yeah. in the eyes of oh, investors. That so. is fabulous. Well, <laughs> I, I was shopping for some good examples, and I think that might be the best. <laughs> well, it was delivered. Okay. Okay, we're, we're good. Third segment. Good morning, folks. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Hope your Saturday, your weekend's off to a great start. My name's Mike Bernard here with... Joshua Gregory and Kevin Corhorn in the KFG studios here at Corhorn Financial Group, Granger, Indiana. Special thanks to Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett with Remax 100 for partnering with us to make the Wise Money Show possible. We are in the midst of a question from James answering it. If you have a question, reach out to us, 574-222-2000, and call or text that number, or wisemoneyradio.com. Lastly, if you'd love to engage with the show in a different way, get a little bit more content, maybe a little bit more humor, check us out on YouTube at Wise Money Radio. You can also follow us, connect with us, Facebook, Twitter, at Wise Money Radio as well. Okay, so we're still hitting a question from James. It's question of the week. Here's what he asked. I recently became eligible to contribute to my new employer's 401k. One of the investment options is the company stock. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Well, a lot of times it is, but there are some drawbacks to it. Uh, One of the reasons why it might be is you can win when your company's winning and you're contributing to your company winning, so you can kind of double win there. The other concept that we just went really detailed in, and folks, I'd invite you, if you missed some of the last segment, catch it on the podcast or on YouTube because we explained a very complicated yet extremely valuable financial strategy called net unrealized depreciation. Doesn't apply to a lot of you, but maybe 25% or so, it might be really, really valuable. So check it out if you missed anything there. All right, let's start talking about the reasons why you wouldn't want to invest too much or invest in your company's 401k, in your company's stock within your 401k. The, the most glaring one to me, you, you just mentioned a double win. If your company wins, then you win, right? I think As I know a positive. Going. There's also a double negative out there or a a double loss, if you will. And you I always can't not out, talk about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's cute. Um, that's horrible. Sorry. Yes. The... <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the the risk here is that if your livelihood today is tied to your company's prospects, your paycheck, in other words, your ability to put food on the table is dependent upon your company remaining a going concern, they're still in business, and so on. That's that's one amount of risk. Um, you, you've kind of tied yourself to the, the company's fortunes. But what about your future self as well, the food that you hope to put on the table someday when you're in retirement? When that is also tied almost exclusively to a company stock, now uh, you, you're betting your future, not just your present, on this company being successful. There's a lot of examples that we need to run through, folks. But, but in essence, how much of your financial life do you want tied to your employer? So you've got your paycheck, 
you most likely have some key elements of your insurance, your protection plan, and you've got your retirement in the form of 401k, being able to save up into that, maybe get a company match and so on. Do you also want to risk too much of your financial life by being heavily concentrated in the company stock? You might not. It's very possible you have a crisis that leaves you unemployed that also could crash your total investments and have you start over near the ground floor with your retirement. Yeah, and as we've said before on the show, concentration builds wealth, diversification preserves it. So if you wanted to load up on company stock, we don't like rules of thumb as a rule of thumb, but we would <laughs> we would say somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of your investment portfolio is a about the the top end of where you might want to be in any one individual stock because once you start going beyond that the problem is you get emotional and the the easiest and we believe when you get emotional you're going to make bad decisions financially and so it's easy to get emotional about the company that you're working for i want you to be emotional about the goals that you're trying to reach out there in the future yeah because achieving any of them involves some sacrifice and if you're not emotional about those things you're not going to go through the sacrifice but once you figure out once you plan for this is what i need to be doing to be on track for that that's when emotions can really start working against you those emotions of saying uh oh something just happened i needed to i need to make big changes well Folks, those are the emotions that can get you in trouble that Kevin's talking about. Absolutely. So, what do you guys say about small business owners? Because there may be some folks listening today where um, in, in effectively they have most of their resources tied up in their own company. And, you know, they're running the company. And is that different, I guess, is is one of the questions. We We have talked about small business owners not nearly enough on the Wise Money Show. Uh, there's a whole lot of them here in our community. Uh, that's one of the things I love about our community. There's a lot of entrepreneurial stuff going on in St. Joe and Elkhart and Michigan, which I love. What I've seen with small business owners is they really have a hard time taking money out of the business. They believe the business is the best investment. And so as dividends come up or salaries or whatever, they, they, they like to keep a lot of money in the business. And in doing so, that concentrated position can really help them accumulate a lot of wealth. In the financial planning process, I personally try to balance that for what are the right ways to take money out of the business. Setting up a 401k is a great way to get money out of the business, and it starts diversifying you um, from, you know, we're, we're going to talk about some examples of companies that didn't that the that things worked it went against them, but for small business owners, it's very. I like to be very intentional about how are you getting money out of the business, divesting. Yeah, absolutely, and you're building up some liquidity ultimately for retirement, right? Because what you don't know is what is your transition out of that business going to look like. You might have some ideas and and maybe even some plans in place, but to have 401k dollars or IRA dollars, Roth dollars, some other resources that are not tied to the performance of your your own company. I think it's important. No one would argue with you that your own company could be your best investment. It just shouldn't be your only investment is our point. That's exactly right. And that goes back to the 10%. Some sort of a guardrail, if you will, as to how much you have. Small business owners are a little bit different. But, but folks, even for small business owners, you're just one market force away. You could have the best business out there, and a market force, the, the winds start changing, and poof, the value has been diminished or is gone. You know, what? I, I have an example of that just recently, this year, in fact, um, if you uh, owned Kroger stock, let's say, um, Amazon makes an announcement that they're buying Whole Foods. They're entering into, into your sandbox all of a sudden. This behemoth company that uh, you know disrupts every industry that they've gone in and, and touched. Now all of a sudden they're getting too close to home. And what happens to Kroger stock when that announcement happens? It plummets. Yep. Right. And, and a, folks, for, for you um, business students out there, Kroger is one of the good to great companies. Good to great. They're seen as this beacon, this, this um, 
this sought after company. You want to be like them. And they're a market force away from because Amazon says, we don't even need to make money in, in groceries. <laughs> we don't even need to make money in groceries. We can lose and poof, your great business, business, your great business value significantly diminished. Yeah. Amazon comes in and says, hey, we're going to uh, own Whole Foods. We're just going to sell the the products for less. And so that was part of Whole Foods shtick is that you could go there and pay $8 for a dozen eggs. <laughs> I mean, there are some really cool features about that. And, um, <laughs> you know, Amazon's coming in and they are disruptive and they're saying, no, we're not even going to let you do that anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> it, that is, well, I, th I think of uh, an example at a client that worked for Federal Mogul. And Federal Mogul's shares had gone from $50 a share down to $10 a share. And he had about $100,000 in his 401k. And he just, he, he just was convinced that he wanted to just kind of belly up to the craps table and roll the dice. Because if it went from 50 down to 10, this was a huge opportunity for him to buy. And we talked and we said, hey, are you on pace to reach your goals? What do you need to do, et cetera, et cetera. So we decided to not buy any Federal Mogul stock before Federal Mogul stock went to 50 cents and then yep. to nothing. So this is, this is where it's very, very important to override the emotion. That's right. So we're going to wrap all this up, whether you should, whether you shouldn't, what the pros and cons are. And then we've got a great question. Should you, we were talking about investing in individual stocks. Should you do that at all? Great question from Joel. Coming up, that and more here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Let's can we can we just do a summary comment to start the sh to start the fourth segment? I feel like we should. It's so good. At least it feels good to me. It might be Joshy. Do you want to wrap it? Sure. Because it it also yeah that's good to start the fourth segment segment with it because this is a real question from Joel. We get this question all the time, and what? it plays right in. The Bitcoin question? No, no. That we're actually in the third. So Joel's question, hey, I've got a, I've got my core investments working just fine, but I kind of want to dabble in individual stocks. All right, fourth segment, land on the plane. And uh, so, folks, if you're watching right now, we actually have a, a little bit of party going on at the KFG office today. And so if you hear some rumblings, those are just hungry stomachs right outside the door waiting for food uh, this morning. So, no, they, uh, we should be just fine. But... See that? It's just getting to 99, where it usually hangs for a minute or so. Well, let's give an update then. A, that's a four-day streak for Susie P, hitting her goal with the, on the Fitbit. Nice. Way to go, Suze. <clears throat> I want to talk about that on the show. I mean, I think that... And, what, the concept of getting everyone the same watch so that we can do something as a team? And then you get your and own two, idea. Two, two, two of the I key folks. I cannot take it. I can't take it. Uh, I feel like every time I pull you guys close to me, you move away. I don't understand. It's <laughs> oh, funny. No, the Fitbit did actually um, start something for me, and now it's so gotten you better. Be starting something. It's, it's gotten better, but yeah. Yeah. Likely story. We're mm -mm. fine. Okay, we're good. We're good? Let's roll. Let's roll. All right. We'll wrap it up and transition to Joel and maybe get to Jim's question. Good morning, folks. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard next to Josh Gregory, who's next to Kevin Corhorn in the KFG studios. Yes. Uh, thanks for being with us today. If you've missed anything, several ways that you can reconnect and catch up. One, the podcast. Every show we do is on podcasts, iTunes, Google Play. Just search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Second, a newer feature. It's been oh, a couple months now. YouTube, every episode is right there at Wise Money Radio. Uh, and lastly, you can find all the previous episodes right there on the website as well, wisemoneyradio.com. 
Those ways you can submit questions right there on the website. You can give us a call, shoot us a text, 574-222-2000. We are just finishing up a great question from James. We've taken a lot of time, gone way deep, but I, I gosh, it's been good stuff. And we've got another great question coming up from Joel. Uh, I don't know what it is with the J names today, but we've got a few of them. Josh, have you ever? I do know Joel. You I know, don't know that this is him. Josh, but... Joel, Jared, Jordan. <laughs> okay. Um, so James' question is basically, I've now got a new employer and the company stock is an option within my 401k. Should I use it or not? We've went really deep. Josh, sum it up for us. Well, you know, on this show, we're always trying to point you towards the principles that apply. Um, what are the principles that you would make your decisions on? We've shared some rules of thumb, things like how much, you know, what percentage of your portfolio should be tied to any one company? Um, when should you, when shouldn't you? Better than principles, though, is process. Yes. And Kevin just shared a great story at the end of the last segment of how going through the financial planning process saved a client of his from making a big mistake in this very issue, the issue of maybe over-investing in, in his own company, but it turned out to be a, a bad investment, and the process of financial planning saved him from making that, that mistake. Principles are great, and you need a process that is based on principles, based on your values. But what the process does is it helps you understand your context and how uh, these decisions are, are going to fit with your overall goals, the life that you're trying to accomplish. And so the decision ultimately, James, as you would expect on this show, we say it's a financial planning decision, not just an investment decision. Don't just rely upon good principles to steer you in the right direction rely on a process to guide you. And, and I would just also add, we, there was a little story in there about um, when you go see a financial advisor, if you're a little self-conscious about your situation, making some quick changes so you're not embarrassed or whatever. No, folks, we, your financial advisor wants you to win. And, and if you work at a company where you can buy into the company stock and you you believe in that company and you want to win and, and, and appreciate when the stock's appreciating, your financial advisor should help you construct the right balance for that. Not just say no, can't can't do it. Doesn't fit. Doesn't make sense. And it should be the right balance. So, speaking of balance, let's transition to the next question from Joel. I love this question, and uh, we touched on it earlier in uh, my own situation. So here we go. Here's his question. I'm working with a financial advisor to help me with my investment structure in my 401k and then my IRA, but I'm curious about starting to do some of my own investing in individual stocks. What advice would you guys give me? I think a lot of financial advisors do this, and, and I think they, um, they might have a reputation of saying, you can't do anything that is different than my philosophy. So if you want my help, this is what we do. Shame on you for thinking anything else. And number one, you want your financial advisor to be very convicted in the investment approach that they use. It should be research-based, evidence-based. They should be able to clearly communicate it to you where you can say, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. What I've seen, though, are a lot of people who want to have a little bit of fun money or want to have something a little bit in addition to that. And I don't know. There are times when I say, yeah, you know what? We're not quite there yet. But there's a lot of times when, yeah, let's do that. And for me, folks, again, we eat our own cooking. So I, we manage portfolios, models here. And so I've got that within my 401k, within my Roth IRA and so on. But I've got a little money in my Roth IRA. I do that because the growth in the Roth IRA is tax deferred, comes out tax free. I've got a couple of companies that I've invested in individually that, um, that I, it's just kind of play money. Now, if they go to zero, because an individual stock could do that, could go bankrupt, Toys R Us, um, that would be a shame, and it'd be good money that I lost. However, it's, an, it, it's not so much of my overall financial nest egg that if it went to zero, I'd be toast. Well, the thing that stands out to me in your situation is you must have a clear picture on what is enough for your goal and what is the extra money? And what I'm hearing you say is that this fun money is extra. Is it that certainly true? seems like that. Yes, I've got a plan for me where I know exactly how much I need to be contributing towards retirement 
and to be on track. And of course, those are a lot of variables and I'm young until things can change, things will change, right? So that will adapt over time, holding that loosely. But right now, there's some money that is actually a little bit flexible. And I'm not using all of that money, but I'm using some of it to play a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, when I hear play or, you know, we, we hear of folks who want to kind of dabble in the stock market and those types of words sound like speculation words to me, investment words. And I, I think it's important to recognize the difference between investing and speculating. Investing is for a clear purpose, for a clear timeline. It's a clear dollar amount. It is goals uh, based. Yep. And whereas the play money purpose isn't necessarily a specific goal down the road. The function it's providing is entertainment for you, if you're being honest, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, and it's a very yes. nerdy form of entertainment. Totally. But totally. No, totally. no, I would give you some advice. Play with something else. You know, start, you start, a puppy. start racing <laughs> lawnmowers or doing something. Chuckle. Yeah. But don't, because here's what happens, and I... Uh, there have been a few different times in my life where I've chosen to own individual stocks as I've learned about things. And what I've found is that when I owned individual stocks, about the only thing that I could think of was what are those stocks doing? Mm -hmm. And I I just couldn't keep my eyes off them. If I'm going past a computer, I'm looking at a computer. This was before I had a phone that had easy access to this kind of information. I can't imagine what that would have been like. But I would say if you want to do deep, meaningful work in your life and you want to be capable of deep thought, get rid of the things that entangle your mind and your brain and distract you constantly. And one of those things could be an individual stock. And because uh, the other problem is once you get into an individual stock and it starts going the wrong way, people's tendency is to double down mm. and only make it worse. So I, individual stocks are fraught with all kinds of peril. There have been lots of folks who have been very successful in investing in them, but I would be very, very careful about getting into something, going someplace where really I don't belong. Yeah, I, I, I like the, I like, what do you want to spend your time thinking about and mm -hmm. worrying about? That's, that's a that's question. Great, that's great advice, Kevin. So uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate just a little bit, even though I agree with everything that you just said. I have had some clients over the years who um, the stock market is actually kind of, it, it is for entertainment, but it's also, it helps them keep their, sh their mind sharp in retirement hmm. because the, the process of going through and researching a company and just paying attention to the game, so to speak, um, it's, it's actually, I, I agree with their thinking that it has helped keep them young at some level, but that is not their retirement riding on it, though. It really, truly is the extra money in their case, and it's, it's no different than having a hobby that maybe keeps you sharp. Or... But it's still speculating. And we've, That's true. And we've all met the person that, it keeps you sharp, and it's pot it potentially keeps you uninteresting. Mm. Because have you ever talked to the person that had three kids, but it was like they had a fourth child, and their fourth one was the favorite, and that was their portfolio. Yep. And that's all they talked about, and all they did in the morning was look at the portfolio when the, the TV came on at 930 and watched it till 4 o'clock. And that could make you... That could be true of anything, though. I mean, that that could be... The, the NFL is that fourth child or yes. some other, you know, interest that just consumes their life. Why is money radio? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't fault <laughs> them for that's that. That's great advice. And and that's a great question, Joel, and glad to mix my own personal stuff into that. I mean, ho hopefully that you can find yourself in that story. But that is all the time we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.